Um, where do you find joy in what you learn? How has play been part of the process of you becoming who you are? I have a hobby. I like to juggle. I actually love to juggle. I love to juggle with other people. Um, I don't do it nearly as much as I used to. But clearly I don't do it as much as I used to. <laughs> but the point is that I love how it feels, actually. I, I love the full engagement, like the dynamic way that it engages your focus and parts of what happen automate and like you're coordinating with another person. And as a kid, I loved that feeling too about different things that I was doing. Um, I wanted to go into organized sports. Uh, my, my family situation did not make that like an easy thing, football, baseball. My mom was raising three boys on her own. And um, I just didn't have an entry point. I didn't have a path in. And so years later, after college, I'm at a picnic. And a friend of a friend is there, and he has a couple sets of pins, and he's a really good juggler, so much better than I am. And he spends two hours with me teaching me the rudiments of juggling, like while we're doing the picnic and waiting for fireworks on the 4th of July. And I get hooked. I get early progress. I start to see that, like, oh, yeah, I can do this. And, and then I go to work the next day, and I have a friend there, and I'm like, do you want to learn how to juggle? And we go down to the mall in Boulder, and we buy pins, and then we stand out on the roof for a couple of years during lunchtime learning to juggle. So I want to stop and pause and say, like, what's the role of pleasure and joy in deciding what you learn, how you learn, and why you learn? And where does that learning happen? I, I think a lot about places like this, this science center that we're in right now. What's the role of this institution, this kind of institution, to support that learning? What's the role of family and friends and learning partners that are in your life? How is it that you need to see yourself in your passion? And how does that how does that sense of self actually open up into a possible future that is so different from who you are right now? Is that how it works? We had the luxury um, and the privilege about 12 years ago to do a study here in Seattle. We were working with um, families in southeast Seattle. These were mostly first-generation fam uh, immigrant families uh, studying the science and learning, um, the science and technology pathways uh, across their lives. And we were trying to understand how and where and why they were learning about science and technology. This is Brenda. Brenda was adopted from Haiti by her mother who had immigrated from Haiti a generation before. When we first met them, Leah Berger and I, they were engaged in making perfumes, like you see here, out of basic scent solutions. They were going through this work for about six months every weekend at the dining room table. There were some disasters along the way, and they learned from that. But as a science educator, it had lovely qualities. They, they were doing iterative experimentation around what they were doing. They were developing conceptual ideas about how it was doing what it was doing. They had, like, a documentation of, like, what they had learned over time. And this is all at home. This is, like, because they found it enjoyable, they had connection to it. They, they, Brenda saw herself in it. So we asked, like, where did this come from in Brenda's life? And the, the mother tells a story about, like, well, when she was a toddler, we used to be at the grandmother's house every Sunday cooking a family meal, and she would hang out with her cousin, and they'd be playing, and they, you know, the family meal, like, they use mortar and pestles to, like, cook the meal. The kids would come in, grab one, and go off to the bathroom to mix potions. So that play activity was then connected to this play activity because the mother saw the possible way to, like, refine that interest years later, and she did so then we came to the science center one night, and I remember it vividly, uh, walking around with them, and they made um, a way, you know, around the whole building. And then there was an exhibit here at the time that was about dinosaurs and dinosaur eggs, and they, they sank into that exhibit, and they had very detailed, playful arguments and discussions about those artifacts. And we said, where does that come from in their life? Um, at this point in time, if you had asked Brenda what she wanted to be, it would have been a paleontologist or a chemist. We were also at her school. Her teachers didn't know she did scientific perfuming at home. They didn't know her career aspirations were related to science. She was not engaging in science, even chemistry in the classroom. We worked with the teachers to like do culturally relevant instruction, like to overlap the learning of subject matter with the lives of the kids. And Brenda came alive, and she like engaged deeply. And the teacher was surprised. Like we had probably thinking that we had gotten through to her. They didn't get through to her. Like she just decided to bring 
the sense of herself to school that day because there was an opening. Her learning agenda had a place. So I want to kind of reflect with you a little bit that as we do our work to support learners across time and place, it's a complicated process where we need to kind of keep those interests uh, developing and opening up safe spaces for them to explore who they may want to be and to get better with the what they want to do. I'm the director of the Institute for Science and Math Education at the, at the Institute at the University of Washington. Our, our um, slogan is, uh, you know, all young people should be able to decide their futures. That's a very hard thing for a lot of young people who get marginalized and get detached from science, who don't find ongoing supports over time. And we're trying to build models and approaches that do that work to keep things building up over time. I want to leave two ideas with you in closing. All meaningful learning involves extended aspects of play. To explore the pursuit itself, yes, but also to explore who we might become if given a chance. Thank you for your time.